All right, guys, in today's video, we're working on this 2.2 liter Ecotec engine inside a 2004 Chevrolet Cavalier. And the problem we've got is a crank no start problem. Now, three things you need for any engine to start from a lawnmower to a Lamborghini. You need air, you need spark, and you need fuel, and you need to crank over those three. So we got crank, so that's not the problem. And we have some clues from the owner that said that what the problem is is that it got hard to start for two days before it wouldn't start at all. All right, so that does not sound like an air problem to me. An air problem would typically be an obstruction in here, a rodent nest, something like that, bad air filter. We're going to cross air off the list. We're going to jump right to fuel. And the way we're going to check fuel is we're going to open up this little cap here, which is on there super tight. On this particular engine, this is where the location is for the fuel pressure check. And we're going to give a fuel pressure check just to see, are we getting fuel from the tank to the engine? And that's easily done with a fuel pressure meter. And on these kind here, I'm going to be using an OTC. You just want to make sure you've got your little nipple in there. These guys, these, guys, these particular tools are prone for those to fall out on you in your box, your toolbox. And all we're going to do is we're going to sit this guy in there like this. Going to take our drain hose and run it off the side of the fender. And I'm just going to go turn the key to the lamp test. You know, you turn the key until the lights on the dash come on. And we're going to see if we get any pressure. All right. So we've got half a tank of fuel. Our lights are on. And we got nada. So we haven't even got any pressure at all. All right, so that's, we don't have to bother checking the spark now, so we know it's a fuel problem. So the next thing we're going to do to check on this is we're going to come into the interior and we're going to start looking at the electrical. All right, inside on the driver's side, there's going to be a fuse box access cover. And what you're looking for is the fuse for the fuel pump and the fuel injectors. It's this guy right here. So when we look at our little legend here, we know that this back row with the 410s and the 20 is right here. So that means the 15 we're after is right there. Second one down on the left. So we're just going to reach in here with a pair of pliers. And we're going to pull this guy out. And we're going to check him to make sure that he's not blown. He's not. So that's a good fuse. If you still weren't sure, you could put a meter on here and check that. But I... I'm fine just doing that kind of visual check. All right, so it's not the fuse, so let's check the relay. All right, guys, we're under the driver's side hood area, and here is the secondary fuse panel and also where the relays are. And the legend on this one's printed right on top. And so right on the top, what we're looking for is you got a heater blower, a spare, a cooling fan, a crank, and a fuel pump. It's right between the AC and the crank. So to get this off, there's some little tabs on the side. Be careful with them so you don't break them. Just bend them out a little bit and nudge this kind of cover off with your finger. All right, so just like the picture, there's our fuel pump relay. And what we can see is the AC relay and the fuel pump relay have the same part number, 3412. So all we're going to do for this test is we're going to swap them. So we're going to put the... Uh, fuel pump one in the AC slot and the AC one in the fuel pump slot and we're going to go put the key back in the lamp test mode and we're going to see if we get any change on this fuel pressure. I doubt it but it's always something you should check. All right nothing. So we've checked the fuse we've checked the relay we're not getting anything so what we can be sure of you know we can get a a meter over here too and we can check that we're getting power there you know I, I'm pretty confident that because of the symptoms that the owner predict um, you know pr shared with us that this is going to be the fuel pump in the tank plus this is the original fuel pump from 2004 so very likely but it is technically one of two problems it's either the fuel pump in the tank or the wiring from here back to the tank so in order to check the wiring back to the tank we're got to get access to the plug that's on top of the, the fuel sender assembly and either way, we're probably going to have to drop the fuel tank to get our hand up there. So what I'm going to do next, it's got half a tank in it. I'm going to go ahead and, and get ready to siphon that off, and we're going to get this jacked up and look underneath the back. All right, guys, let's take a quick look at the service manual for this particular vehicle from GM and see what the procedure is. All right, so they go through 
special tools to drain the fuel tank. We don't need that. Um, I'll show you how to do it from underneath with a siphon. And then the fuel tank replacement. So the removal process. Relieve the pressure. Well, we don't have to worry about that because we don't have any. Drain the tank. We're going to do that. Raise the vehicle, of course. Disconnect the quick connect fitting at the fuel filter. Yep. The fuel, disconnect the fuel return pipe. Now they're going to tell you to remove the rubber exhaust hangers and let the exhaust system rest because they're going to want to remove the exhaust heat shield. We're not going to do either of these. I'll show you how to skip these two steps. Uh, loosen the fuel filler hose clamp at the fuel tank. We're going to loosen this, but we're not going to loosen it at the fuel tank. We're going to loosen it at the opposite end. Um, and we're going to disconnect it at the opposite end. So I'll show you that. We are going to disconnect the EVAP vapor pipe. We are going to disconnect the electrical harness from the multi-way connector. And uh, we're going to get a transmission jack under here, and we're going to lower this guy out after we disconnect the straps. And then we'll go ahead with the procedure to do the sender. So we'll get this tank out first, and then we'll move on to what I would expect is on the next page. This is the installation. Here we go. Fuel pressure sensor. It's got to be right around here somewhere. They should be in close proximity to each other. Here it is, yeah, fuel sender assembly replacement. So we'll come back and look at this after we get the tank out. All right, guys, we're underneath here, and you're going to get the upside-down view because that's the view I've got because I'm laying on my back underneath here. And we've got this thing up on jack stands and ramps. I'll show you that set up in a minute. But let's focus on some of the things we're going to be working on, right? So right over here is the strap that's on the passenger side. There's the electrical connector with that red retaining clip. This is where we're going to disconnect the fuel filler hose from this side rather than the tank side. The tank side is right there, but it's a little bit cramped to get in there, so we're going to do the other end. The vent connector is right here, and we'll eventually get to that. And then right in the back there, these two hoses that you see with the yellow tape on them, that's the in and the outlet hoses to the fuel pump on the fuel sender assembly. One of those goes to the fuel line, one goes to the fuel filter. It's kind of obstructed by some of this stuff. We'll get another view of it in a minute. We'll disconnect that at some point. But all of this we're going to sit for now. We're going to start on the driver's side. So let's reposition the camera and show what's going on, on the driver's side with those rivets. All right, guys, reposition it now. Still underneath the vehicle. Giving it to your right side up here. Past the canister. Right in the back there is the first rivet we're after. Very wide head rivet, attaches the f exhaust heat shield to the driver's side fuel tank strap. We're going to go out to the rivet first because we don't want to open up any of the fuel lines, get any vapors down here while we're using an electric drill. And to make more room for this, we're also going to go after this 10 millimeter right there so we can drop this purge canister out of the way and give ourselves some more access. So let's get in position to do that. All right, guys, let's get that 10 millimeter. Yeah, she was going for a minute. Probably you're going to have up here is a lot of corrosion. Fortunately, that wasn't too bad. All right, let's get this assembly moved out of the way. Just let it drop down like that. All right, so now we can actually see the fuel filter right there. And now we get better access to this rivet. So let's get in position to go after that rivet. All right, guys, we're going to start with the small bit first, right inside at the middle. Now, you don't need to go in too far because you don't want to accidentally puncture the bottom of the floorboard. We're just going to continue walking the sizes up. So I'm going to walk this up a couple more sizes and we'll come back. That's it. So we've drilled the head off the rivet. And now this piece is free. All right, guys, we started off with a 1 8 
right inside the, to make the pilot. Then we stepped up to a 13, uh, excuse me, 11 64ths, 11 64ths. And then we finally popped the head off with a 13 64ths. So we don't go, you don't want to go any bigger than this, or you'll make the original hole for the rivet in the strap too big to put the replacement in. So that's all you have to do to draw it out. All right, guys, with that out of the way, we're going to come in here and, and just get this PB blaster on the strap bolt. Let that start soaking because that's also going to probably be really corroded up in there. We're going to go get the uh, other one, too, but uh, I'm not going to put that in the shot right now. All right, so there's a number of these rivets, right? We took the one that's on the strap. There's another one right over here. I can see it right there. There's another one there. There, if you follow this around the perimeter, you'll find there's a total, I think, of six. But we're only going to take this one out so that we can free up the strap. The way we're going to take this tank out, I don't think we'll need to take the others off, and we're not going to drop this entire shield. I'll show it to you as we go. The next thing we're going to do, though, is it's a 14-gallon-ish tank. It's a little bit more than half, so it's probably got eight gallons of fuel in it. So you want to get that weight out. So what we're going to do next is we're going to pop this clamp right over here. I showed you earlier. We want to get this hose off because what we're actually going to do is we're going to stick our siphon right in through here. So I'll first try to get this off with some nylon jawed pliers so we don't mar up the rubber. I don't know how well that'll work. Nope, not budging a bit. So we'll have to come on here with more of our traditional tools. I'm just going to try to be real gentle and not create any sparks or anything. We're also going to want to look at, you know, how badly corroded is this hose, right, or this, this, this pipe, rather. It's a possibility that it's damaged enough it'll have to be replaced, so you have to watch for that, too. Move this clamp a little bit further back. It's real tight on there. Just going to work this guy around nice and slow all the way around the perimeter of the hose. She wear eye protection too. All right, let's see if we can get anywhere with this now. Better. Still not good enough. All right, so I'm going to keep working with this hose, guys. Eventually, we'll get it to where we can pull it off. I'm going to keep the camera rolling, although I might not keep all this footage. Depends on how boring it is. Get up here and get ourselves a little bit of lubricant in here, too. on there tight but she's moving we'll eventually get her off guys <laughs> here we go all right we're gonna aim it down this way because we don't want any of those rust fragments to end up in the tank 
shake all that crap out. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go get our siphon gear and we're going to start pulling this fuel out. All right, guys, so we got our siphon going down that pipe. You got to have a pretty narrow siphon tube to clear the little orifice where the hose and the uh, tank come together. But we got this guy going right over here to our gas tank. So as soon as we uh, drain this out, we'll pick it up and continue. All right, guys, we've gotten about as much fuel as we're going to get out of this siphoning. I put something in here so that when we drop the fuel tank, we don't get any debris or crud in there. Uh, we got somewhere between six and seven gallons. Um, each gallon weighs about six pounds, so that's a, a good amount of weight off of our, our uh, lift here. All right, so now we got four things to disconnect, and then we're going to take the straps off. So we're going to disconnect this electrical connector. We're going to disconnect this blue quick connect on the fuel. We're going to disconnect this green quick connect on the fuel, and we're going to disconnect this quick connect here. So let's go ahead and start with the electrical one. So we're going to remove this safety clip here first so that we can get access. I should be able to come underneath, maybe not block your view too much. All right, so there's that. And you can tell which one to do, right? Because this is the one going up to the top of the fuel tank. And we're going to go ahead and just drop him right in the back there. Now to get these quick connects off, I take a small flathead screwdriver. And we're going to lift up this little locking tab here and here. With that out of the way, we should be able to push this up just like that. Push this up just like that. Get up there, you. This one's getting stuck. All right, now with that pushed up, like you see up on top, let me see if I can get you some more light here. So you can see this is raised now, right? It was like that. It was pushed down. Let me see if I can push it back the way it was. Super brittle. Now, I guess I can't. I pushed it up. I'm just going to go ahead and remove it. There he goes. All right, so he comes off. This is what I was trying to show you. So this, this piece here has got to come up. Just like you see that. It's got to raise up. When you put it back together, you push it down, and you'll be able to relock it. All right, the same deal with this one, although we didn't get the green up all the way yet. reason he's being stubborn. I'm going to have to hold him up with my hand. They were quick connect fittings when they were young. Now they're old and they're not so quick anymore. All right. So we have to give that guy some encouragement. All right, guys, we got this off. I'm going to put it back on to do it from the beginning here. She was just, uh, I guess, really bound up with dirt and stuff like that, right? So there she's back in. Now, the way this should have went was undo that clip. We undo that clip. We push it up. And we pull it out just like that. What I ended up doing to break it free was I sprayed some PB Blaster up in here for the little bit that I had open. And the O-ring on this guy had just bound up onto the fuel filter. All right, so that's three out of four down. Now we got this guy here. Last guy to go before the straps. So this guy here, you give him a squeeze, and you see how these tabs here will kind of clear this ridge. That's what they expect you to do on this one. Now, just because of the angle of this, it's going to be difficult for me to not block your view. Just 
try to get something in here and try to help get these up over this thing because they're a little bit brittle now and so they're just not cooperating. You just got to be really gentle because you don't want anything to break. All right, so there's that one. He's almost clear. All right, so he's going to clear just okay. Now I got to get this one back here. When this stuff was young, you could just give it a squeeze and that would be enough. But, you know, once again, it's all brittle now. So that's no longer sufficient. Now the good news is a lot of these things are going to get replaced with our new fuel piece, right? We'll have new hoses built onto it. All right, so I think we've got those clear. I can see them both up over the ridge here and here. So that guy just comes off now. All right. All right. We don't want to have anything else broke or damaged. I'm noticing that that guy's got a little bit of pressure on him, so I'm going to kind of set him back up in his little bracket right here. Just for now, get him out of the way. All right, put this down behind this cross member. We'll take these blue and green lines that we just connected. They connect to fuel pump sender assembly. Just gonna get them down where they'll come down to. All right, so now it's time for these straps. I believe this guy's a 13. Let us see if that's the case. I know you're probably not going to be able to see. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to break the torque on these. And I'm going to go to the one on the other side, and then you can see over here we've got our transmission jack. I'm going to go ahead and bring this up into contact with the gas tank, and then we'll go ahead and pull these strap bolts. All right, guys, we're going to pull this strap bolt the rest of the way now for the passenger side. Just if I can get you a little bit zoomed in there. All right, and now let's go do the driver's side. All right, let's finish getting the driver's side strap bolt out. Again, we've got our transmission jack in position. All right, guys, so here we've got our passenger side strap dangling. You know, be careful not to deform it, but just kind of pull it off across from this bar. We've got our transmission jack with just a bit of a gap, because what you'll find is even after removing these straps, unlike on a, on a truck or a full-size car, this gas uh, container, this fuel tank, is going to be adhered to the bottom of the body. So we're going to have to work that loose. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take some wood, and we're just going to work it around nice and gently all the way around the perimeter of the tank until we can get this guy to unadhere. Right? So I'm going to keep going around doing that and we'll come back when we've got him to let go of the body. All right, guys, so we're almost there. You can see we got it moving a lot more now. So I think here on the pasture side, it has let go. Whoops. Lost our little canister over there. Now I'm going to go work on the driver's side. Almost got it. It's completely let go on the passenger side and the middle. There's just a little bit more on the driver's side. And in fact, 
might have to take another one of these rivets off the shield. I'm going to try to avoid that. So let me take a look and see if we can nudge it out without taking any more rivets out. All right, guys, she's still binding up in one area. And so what I think I need to do, because I don't want to damage this heat shield by bending it, so we can get our light a little bit less glary. So we got one more. So there's the rivet we took off. We got one more right there. And I think I'm going to have to take that one off in order to get enough play in this exhaust shield without bending it. So the idea here, what I want to do is I want to slide the tank out of that shield, treat that shield kind of like a pocket, and just drop it down on the passenger side and pull it right out of there. That way I don't have to take all these rivets out. And I know, you know, if you take it to some shop, they'll probably just rip up the shield and tear it all up. But we're trying to do it the factory way and not do that, or rather the dealership way. So I'm going to pull this last corner rivet off and let's see if that gives us what we need. All right, guys, with that other rivet out, that gave us some clearance. And now we're just going to wiggle this guy towards the passenger side. Get some wood down here so that we don't scratch up or damage this plastic tank. All right, now I'm going to be able to get it out now. I'm going to, just going to go in and grab it on that end. It's very light because all the fuel that is left is down this end. And then we'll be able to get it out of the car. All right, guys, this is it. It's like we've had uh, some critters chilling out in here. All right, so the first thing we're going to look at here, do we have any obvious damage to any of the wiring? To find out if we... You know, wasted our time here, and there's really nothing really wrong with the wiring. Pop this uh, sensor lead out, nice and shiny. Pop this uh, retainer here. I might not be able to get it without a screwdriver. There's like another one of these safety clips here that we can't get that off, so I have to go back and, and get that. But All right, so this is the original guy here. The new one is going to come with these molded-on hoses. We'll salvage this hose and the harness. If we can get my finger up there to get this guy off. Nope, not enough room. I have to use a screwdriver or something, but this is another one of those where you give it a pinch on both sides and you can pull it off. So let's get a screwdriver, let's get this off, let's get this off, and let's pop this out so we can take these two lines out. All right, let's take this little safety guy out first. I'm going to block your view for a moment. There he goes. All right, so you don't want to lose that. We want to put that back on. But that will allow us to remove the pump and sender harness here. Nice and shiny. No problems there either. All right, and then down here... Should just be able to push this out. We just gotta bend it in a little bit. I brought a bigger one for this. Come on. You basically just got these little wings, right? And you just gotta Get them both out of the way at the same time and roll this guy out. There's one. And then we want this one. At the same time, you got to be kind of gentle on it because it is old. And we don't care about the line, we just don't want to break this. All right, so this and this. We don't care about because it comes with a new new assembly. Now we want to get this guy off. Might have to get a pair of pliers in here. Almost. 
Almost got her out of her tomb. It's the same deal as that EVAP canister connector we had underneath, right? You just got to give it enough of a squeeze to get these little latches to let go of that ridge. All right, so this guy goes on to the new one. Now what we're going to have to do is get this locking plate off. So what I'm going to do with that, since we got fuel in here still, is I'm going to use a brass hammer and a brass drift. All right, guys, first we're going to get some of the crud off of here with some brake cleaner. Now dust, dirt, grime, we don't want any of that falling inside. ring off. The ring we can reuse unless it's really corroded. If yours is really corroded. I would replace it. I might even replace this one. Here's our assembly. You gotta watch it when you come out because it's gonna have a, a float on the end of it. O-ring out of here first. All right, so she's wedged up in here for some reason. There. Yeah, that was just our uh, tool going down. I mean, our lock ring. All right, so there she is. So that's the unit that we believe to have failed. And the other thing you want to go do with a safe light is just take a look in the tank see if you see any rocks or debris in here this one looks pristine there's like a gray sealant coating all over the inside of these tanks that's what we expect to see so it looks good so let me show you what the new one looks like all right guys this is the replacement lock ring an ac delco tr7 or a gm 256 91 383 all right so it should look like that nowadays instead of being plated it's like some kind of a black paint on it and our replacement fuel unit is an MU 1374 from AC Delco or an 8896-7294 from GM. So this unit is basically identical to what we removed as you can see. We've got two brand new lines, new sock, new level, also new pressure sensor. So we don't even have to transfer that over. The old days used to have to transfer this over, but it's all ready to go. So we're gonna get that cleaned up. Also in the package, we've got a couple of new O-rings. We got the one you saw me remove and the one that's sitting in the tank that I didn't take off. We're gonna clean up the entry and then after I get everything cleaned up, I'll show you putting it back in and then we'll get everything reversed and reinstalled. And hopefully it solves our problem. All right guys, so taking a look in the service manual again, this was the removal procedure for the fuel sender assembly. Right, so we dropped the tank, we disconnected the harness and the, from the sender and the fuel tank pressure sensor. They mentioned that it's going to spring up when you remove the locking ring. They also mentioned that, you know, there's going to be fuel in there. Obviously, you want to do this, this whole step with brass tools like I used or wood or plastic so there's no sparks. Um, empty the fuel from the tank into a container. We've done that separately off camera. They have a special tool for putting that ring on and getting it off, but you can see you can use it, uh, you can take it off the way I did. Pull it out, and in some cases you might have to re replace the sensor. We didn't have to do that with, our with ours, right? So we're going to skip over the installation procedure. Uh, actually, no, let's just go ahead and go through that, right? So if you're going to install it, you just reverse all that. Now, like I mentioned before, sometimes the sensor wasn't included. That's why the service manual mentions putting it on. They mentioned installing a new seal on the tank, getting the fuel pipes lined up with the mark on the tank where the clips are going to hold it in the alignment, push it down, and then get the locking ring back seated into the tab slots, and then you're ready to put the tank back in. Now, about those seals, so we're going to pop over here and look at my iPad for a second. 
I want to point out about these seals. There's two. It's actually that little package. I thought maybe there were two seals on this particular car. There's not. There's two types of seals. There's a G26 AC Delco or a GM257-1245-4 or a G42 Delco 2100-8100. And the difference is one's a O-ring type seal and one is a square cut seal. The square cut is used on ours. It depends on the fuel tank. Um, it covers the same years, but there are two different suppliers of fuel tanks. So there's two different kinds of seals needed. So let's go ahead and see where we're at. All right, guys, looking underneath the vehicle, I'm just showing you these sticky pads that are what we had so much trouble to separate the tank from, right? So there's one here, and there's one here. And then on the opposite side where the flashlight's lighting it up, there's the same thing here and here. And you can't see it because of the heat shield, but there's another one up on there. So there's five of these things holding. And if we come over this side here, right, you know, they are pretty sticky, right? Just take my wrench up here, right? They're extremely sticky. You can put a hammer up here and they'll hold it. So that, you want to leave them here. Don't think you're going to take them off to make anything easier because this is also an insulation pad for vibration and it also maintains the correct spacing from the fuel tank to the body. But uh, keep note of these. You don't want to have these make t contact with the tank when you get ready to reinstall it until you're ready or they'll grab it. All right, so let's go take a look at our tank all cleaned up and get our new pump installed. All right, guys, so we've cleaned up our tank. You know, we're not trying to make it pristine. We're just trying to get a lot of the dirt, debris, you know, uh, crud off of it to make it obvious where we're going to be putting things and also to help with these kind of sticky pads, right? So there's the mounting point of the two on this side, and there's the mounting point of the two on this side. We also went over here and cleaned up our mounting surface for our new pump sender module. We're going to go ahead and reuse the original ring because it's steel. You know, if it was plastic or any kind of non-metallic material, I would replace it. But metal doesn't go bad. You know, we bought one just in case it was heavily corroded. I would have replaced this if I had any deep pitting on it, but this is just kind of like a surface oxidation. No sense having the owner pay for another one of these in that case. So if we think about our new container, I'll bring this out from yesterday, right? We had two of these seals and we just showed why we have two of these seals. Different fuel tanks take different seals. And we remember from just uh, removing this that ours took this square cut seal. All I'm going to do before I put it into the groove it sits on, I'm going to take a little bit of clean 5W30, 5W30 motor oil and we're going to do this um, on the quick connects too. We just want to get it where it's not dry. It's going to sit right in that groove right there. And then we're going to bring our fuel sender module assembly down. We're going to very gently get our float in there. We're going to work our locking ring into position. Now we're going to have to compress it down and get it to where we can lock it into place. All right, so once you get it kind of part way, you're just going to go around and make sure before you hammer it in that it looks like it's fully seated against that O-ring seal. And it does look that way. So now I'm going to go ahead and tap it in. And I'm talking about the lock ring here, tapping in the lock ring. So once it bottoms out, Right, you don't want to see a gap, and you're done. All right, so now we can take our hoses. I'm going to reroute everything. If you remember last time, we took them out of this, and so now we're going to snap them into this. 
There's that one. There's that one. There's this one. There's this one. And if you remember on that one, there was a little safety piece too. I'm going to reinstall that. Okay. I'm take out this piece of paper that we had on there just to keep any debris from getting in there while we were working. Bring this vent line around. Snap him in. Okay. At this point, we are ready to reinstall it back into the vehicle. All right, guys, so we're underneath again. Here's our exhaust heat shield, right? We're going to leave it pulled down where we had it from the two rivets we loosened up here. Here's our strap for the driver's side. We currently have it outside, right? So what we're going to do now is we're going to kind of get it like this. We're not going to put it all the way yet. We're just going to get it part way. And remember, our tank is virtually empty. It's got maybe, maybe a quart of fuel in it. So it's very easy to work around with it. And I, I don't know if I mentioned it earlier, but once you get it out, just pour the rest of the fuel out through the filler tube and, you know, get as much as you can out. You can't get it all out because there's like a baffle plate there that uh, will block some of it, but you can get it down to where it's nothing. And so we're just going to slide this back into this pocket that's created by this exhaust heat shield. Right. I'm going to stop it here for just a second because the next thing, I'm not going to be able to film all of this, but the next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to work all of these hoses and pipes. You don't want these guys to get damaged in your new assembly. Just want to work everything up above the bar. And similarly, we want to bring our filler hose up in that direction as well. Now just getting everything ready to go. So I'm just going to continue to manipulate this back into the pocket the way we took it out. Get all this stuff up above and we'll come back when she's situated. All right, guys. So just another kind of progress shot here. All right. So you see everything is routed up over the bar. And the, the tank is like pushed into that pocket that's created by the shield. So now we're just going to continue to tweak it a little bit till we get everything lined up and then we'll start the straps. All right, guys, last few steps here, installing the tank, right? So we put the sender in. We've got it raised into position. We're going to tighten down the straps now to 26 foot-pounds. I'll show you that in just a minute. Uh, they talk about putting the harness in. I actually do the harness last. Um, evap hose, fuel ho filler hose for the tank. Uh, they don't mention it, but you've got the fuel line to the filter to hook up as well. The hose clamp is 27 inch-pounds on torque on that. Install the hangers. We didn't do that. Install the heat shield. They talk about bolts. Older years use bolts. Newer years like ours used rivets. So we're going to install new rivets as well. Uh, here's where they're finally talking about the fuel pipe and fuel filter connects. Lowering the vehicle, refilling it, put the cap back on, connecting the battery cable. Well, you know, they never told us to disconnect the battery cable on the removal procedure. And so we didn't do that. And I don't think that's really a big deal, right? Um, the main thing is as long as you've gotten it unplugged, there's no way it's actually going to, you know, spark, start pumping fuel out onto the ground. This is the important thing. So you need to check for leaks. So after everything's all set up and you got some fuel in there, at least five gallons, you're going to turn the key on, but don't start it. Turn it off. So two, wait 10, turn it back on again. Wait two, turn it off again, and then go back in the back and check and see if you got any leaks. Only after you're sure nothing's leaking under pressure will you go ahead and try to start it. Now, of course, we're going to check our pressure meter to verify we've got pressure when we do this procedure. So let's go underneath. All right, guys, so we've got our straps in here. We haven't put them all the way down, but you can see how we've gotten them snug, not to the mounting position, but to the tank, right? And the reason we haven't tightened them down yet is you're going to want to do some kind of final adjustments here with your hand, right, before we put any fuel in here. We still have this tank where we can move it around. So what we've mainly been trying to do is get the strap back on the original witness marks. The other thing that's handy to have is a nice rubber mallet. Come back in here and you can tap down any bends that you might have. And it also can help you get the tank to, you know, 
cooperate when you want to move it around slightly with minor adjustments, right? All right, so that's what we've done here. And we've done the same thing on the driver's side. Also on the driver's side, we've made sure that our shield wasn't bent or damaged. And we've gone back and made sure that it's going to line up with the holes for the rivets. You can't see that in this shot here. I'll give you another shot of that in a moment, but just to kind of show you how that all ended up, right? We want to make sure that nothing was bent or damaged. It's back the way we found it. So at this point, what I'd like to do is I've just got this up here, you know, again, so it's out of our way. We've got everything kind of blocked off with paper towels so that no critters got in here. We're going to go ahead and pop those out for the fuel fill line because what I'm going to want to do before I complete the torque on the straps is I'm going to want to get some weight on the tank. So I'm going to put a few gallons of fuel in it. After I get the fuel in there, what I'm going to do to help us along with this is I'm going to put some silicone spray around this pipe just to make it go on a little easier. Guys, remember it was a real pita to get it off. So make it a little easier to get it back on. What you want to do is you want to make sure the hose goes back up to this ridge in the metal. Make sure she's in there with no kinks. And then we can retighten up this guy here. Mr. Flashlight. Trying to get it back, you know, basically the same position it was before. And then what we'll do is we'll torque this to the 26 inch pounds or excuse me, 27 inch pounds that we saw in the service manual. So we're going to go ahead and put a little bit of fuel in here to get some weight on it, make sure we still like the positioning of the tank. If we do, we're going to come in here with our 13 millimeter and we're going to torque both of these mounting bolts to 26 foot pounds. And then like I said, we're going to torque this little guy to 27 inch pounds. And then we're going to be ready to start the last few steps here. All right, guys, we've got our straps torqued down. And now we're ready to go to the next and final step. So the next thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to get our exhaust heat shield re-riveted onto the strap, as well as the connector that it came off behind this exhaust pipe that you can't see. The part number on these rivets from GM is 115-69-663. of them out here. I'll show you one. I'm not going to show them both. They're basically the same thing, but these are these large flat-headed rivets. And basically what we're going to do, we're going to push our shield up, line it up with the hole, get the rivet in like that. And then we're going to take our rivet gun. pushed all the way up there. Now before I actually do it, I'm just going to do one more push up on the rivet, I mean, excuse me, on the shield just to make sure it's up all the way and that I can see that it's lined up with the hole that we'll need for the other one. And then we're just going to install the rivet. Until it's fully compressed. When it's fully compressed, it'll break the head off like that. And then you can take it out of the end of your rivet gun and pull it out. Now you can also use a small gun like this. I like the kind that have the heads that move. And that's probably what I'm going to use to get the guy that's right back here. So, all right, guys, we've got our rivets in. Now let's go to the next step. So whenever you put a new fill pump in, it's a good idea to put a new fuel filter in. Take out our plugs here. And the reason for that is that the uh, filter could have been partially plugged, which could have contributed to the death of the previous fuel pump, or even if it was not, when the previous fuel pump died, it could have some debris that got put back in there. So we want to change it out. So we're going to use a 20 millimeter on the filter, and we're going to use a 16 on this fitting below it. And 
Now this one was changed a few years ago, so it's not that bad. These can get really corroded on here though. And these will still have fuel in them, usually, so don't get underneath it. As you can see, it's dripped right out right there. Okay, we're going to replace that with a GF578 AC Delco filter or a GM25121293. And when you take these out, They'll have a different kind of quick connect end on them because there's two different kinds of quick connects. And so what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to remove this because the type that we have doesn't use this. So I'm just going to reach under here with the flathead and get the little clips so that it comes off like that. And then we'll just put this guy on in place of the one we just took off. Now before we get it all tightened up, we're going to pull the plug out of this guy. This is the shipping plug that came with the new pump. I'm going to pull the shipping plug out of this guy right there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take some clean motor oil. You should always do this on the male ends of these things both this new filter as well as the inlet pipe. We'll get this guy on first and then we'll do the pipe. That guy's on. Let's get some oil on this guy. This is just because we've got new O-rings in these connectors and we want to give them their best chance at a good life. All right, so this is the return line. Sets in, push them down. If he won't go in, it means he's not seated all the way. There he goes. All right, and then we can lock him. All right, now let's tighten up our filter. Grab our 20 and our 16 again. Just gonna snug him up with this. And then we're going to put them to 20 foot-pounds is the service manual spec for this. So we're going to come in here with a 16 millimeter crow foot. Until you get it to click there. All right. Now just double check your work. The last thing we've got is this EVAP line. So let me clean up some of the spilled oil we got and we'll put that back on. All right guys, we got everything cleaned up now. Bring our EVAP canister up here. I'm gonna pull our two critter covers off of that. Fit them up in his little bracket. And we've got a 10 millimeter bolt that you saw us take off earlier. You don't need to see me put that back in here. I'm just gonna get it on part way so it doesn't fall down on us. All right, we're gonna slide our small one in. Actually, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little bit of oil on these guys too. These kind are not as important to get like this than the metal ones, but it's still a good idea. Snap that one back in. Snap that one back in. And we're going to tighten 
this guy. Put a little bit of PB Blaster on this rusty bolt just to help it go in a little easier. And then what we're going to do on this one for a torque is 89 inch-pounds. All right. All right, guys, we're all set. We got our rivets on our shield. We got our new filter in. We've got it torqued down to 20 foot-pounds. We've got our canister back torqued down to 89 inch-pounds. All of our hoses are in and clicked. The last thing we've got now is the power. So we're going to come over here in this back corner. And we're going to re-energize the fuel pump assembly. Once it clicks, make sure you put this red safety piece back in. Until it snaps in as well, right? Lift that up so you guys can see and peek in there. All right, let's let her off the jacks and let's go through the leak procedure. All right, guys, we got it back on the ground. Let's go see what our meter on the fuel pump pressure reads when we go do this leak test. So I'm gonna go do the two seconds on, 10 seconds off thing. One, two, one, two, Nine, ten, two more seconds on. Let's see, do we got any pressure? Good, we got some pressure this time. So we'll keep cycling through that until we get all the air out and then we'll go check for some leaks. All right guys, we've done this a couple of times to get the air out. And so now you can see our pressure is up to what we would normally expect here. Again, we haven't tried to start the engine yet because we want to go check for leaks. We've got a nice healthy 50 PSI with all that air pushed out of here. So let's go check for leaks and then we'll give her a crank. All right, guys, no leaks. Let's see if she starts up. All right, that's it. Running just fine. So this repair is done. I hope you guys learned something. I hope it helps you out if you have to do your own repair like this. If you got any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them below and I'll try to help. If you found this useful, entertaining, or it saved you some money, take a moment to hit that like button. I'd really appreciate it. And as always, thanks for watching.